it's definitely working. I forgot the gavel, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the April 1st meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party. This isn't a joke. Uh, it's for real. And thank you for coming. Um, if you would uh, please join me in rising in a moment of silence to honor those who serve our country. and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, when you came in, you should have gotten three slips of paper. Um, the agenda for this meeting, the minutes from the previous meeting, and a membership form. Um, the meeting, meeting minutes from the previous meeting, I've already been told about one correction that we need to make. Um, municipal elections, it says we'll start in September. That actually should read, municipal election qualifying is in August. Are there any other corrections to the minutes? Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. Now our um, treasurer, Jim Parker, is attending the City of Valdosta 101 class for the next five weeks. So he is not here to give us our financial report. But lucky for me, he left it on a slip of paper. Um, at the beginning of the month, we had $1,340.80. And at the end of the month, we had $946.69. Each month, we pay our rent, our cable bill, um, and any office expenses that we have, which are generally minimal at this current season. Um, if you have not paid your membership dues yet, please do. That helps us to keep in business. Um, and. Uh, if you want to make an extra donation, that helps us make it through the year and um, work to elect strong Democrats. Um, this evening, we have with us um, Joyce Evans from the County Commission. Joyce. And Demarcus Marshall from the County Commission. Thank you very much for being here. And each month we have a special speaker who comes and talks to us about um, some part of the government. And this evening we have a really, uh, I think, great speaker and a great thing to talk about. The Valdosta Regional Airport is a very important part of our economic engine. And I think people really don't appreciate the airport maybe enough. They go, oh, it's a one little one gate thing. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of things I love about our little one gate thing. If you leave your pocket knife in your pocket, and you go to security, they go, hey, you want to run back to the car and put that back? So um, I really love our airport. And uh, our speaker tonight is uh, Executive Director Jim Galloway. Yeah. Thank you, Gretchen. I see uh, several familiar faces in the, in the audience this evening. And uh, it's kind of a long duty title that I have. But I'll talk to you about governance of the airport um, and uh, some of the funding uh, for the airport uh, and then some of the projects that we have going on and some of the things that we see happening in the future uh, and then some of the uh, areas that where you all uh, may be able to help us uh, in the future to help us help the community better. The airport authority uh, uh, is, consists of six members. I'm the executive director of the airport authority and the airport manager of the Valdosta Regional Airport and those duties kind of combined in, in a lot of areas. The airport authority itself is a political subdivision of the state of Georgia. It was enabled by legislation uh, at the state legislature in 1987 in order to put it into place then both the uh, Lowndes County Board of Commissioners and the mayor and city council of Valdosta had to have a joint resolution in order to say yea verily the airport authority is now created. And at that time the airport property was owned by the city and the city ceded the airport uh, property and improvements to the airport authority. 
The tie back to the county commission and to the city uh, mayor and city council is that of the six members that we have on the airport authority itself, all six are unpaid volunteers. Uh, three are appointed by the city and three are appointed by the county. And each the city and the county have their own requirements for uh, being appointed to their boards and commissions. And they, they vary slightly, but uh, they're becoming more and more aligned. And the way they're set up are for four-year terms. And so like in May of this year, one city appointee and one county appointee uh, will, will roll off and then there'll be other people uh, can do. I'll say one difference in how the, the city does. We have uh, one of our members as uh, a lawyer here in town, Nathaniel Hogabrook. Uh, he's a city appointee and he desires to be reappointed, but the city requires uh, uh, for transparency purposes that basically he reapply just like he had never been on the authority before. So they advertise the position as it's coming open and he reapplies and resubmits his code of ethics uh, part of that for his, uh, uh, his consideration. And then in the early part of May, uh, then the city council will select who they want to be their, their appointee. Similarly, the county has a, a form that they fill out. It's not uh, as, as quite as involved as the city. Uh, if someone desires to be reappointed, uh, typically, the, the county just likes to get a, a letter from the authority chairman that says that this member desires to be reappointed. Uh, we do have a member that's rolling off now that does not desire to be reappointed, so we're going through the full application process uh, now for those folks, and we have uh, uh, two candidates that are interested in, uh, in that seat. The authority members uh, on the makeup, uh, we have a car dealer, uh, we have a doctor, we have a travel agent, we have an architect, uh, and we have a lawyer, and we have a financial advisor. Uh, most of the, uh, if you can imagine, the travel agent has, you know, that's kind of her, her livelihood, if you will, the lady that owns South Georgia Travel uh, is, is on the authority. Uh, the, uh, the car dealer uh, and the doctor uh, and the financial advisor all have either an airplane or an interest in an airplane. Uh, out at the airport. So they not only have a, a vested interest in things operating a policy level from the uh, airport authority perspective, but they are actually users of the airport, so they kind of have their finger on the pulse of what's going on on other aspects of the airport itself. So that's kind of how the airport's governed. So we got the, the six uh, unpaid volunteers. We meet monthly on the second Wednesday of every month out the airport conference uh, room at 8 o'clock in the morning. Our meetings are open to the public and subject to the Sunshine Laws of Georgia. Um, and uh, so we, uh, we strictly adhere to, uh, to those requirements. Anytime we have four or more that are going to be uh, discussing airport business, then we'll advertise that or we'll let the paper know that we're going to have a, a, an out-of-cycle type meeting so that word gets out uh, to folks. And we'll also post uh, uh, messages uh, at least a week in advance in our office that we're going to have a, a meeting outside of our normal prescribed meeting times. Funding for the airport is, uh, is kind of an interesting, interesting thing. It's, there's three major funding streams uh, that where the, the money comes into the airport. First of all, I'll talk about the operating account. The enabling legislation for the airport authority uh, by law requires that the airport be funded equally by the city and the county. Well, that's not exactly how it happens. And I'll just make the, the math easy, but it's very close. It's within, say, $90,000 is our operating account for the airport is roughly a million dollars a year. That, out of that million dollars, uh, we generate just over half of that from airport proceeds, from rent, hangar rentals, landing fees, other fees and charges that are uh, rent and things that are out there at the airport itself. The remaining portion of it uh, is divided equally between the city and the county, which roughly is about $240,000 each uh, that we receive on a monthly basis, uh, divided by 12 on a monthly basis. Uh, from the city and the county. In that, I prepare the budget um, uh, for the, the fiscal year, which mirrors the city and counties from 1 Ju July to 30 June. And then at our next week's meeting, I will su uh, si uh, submit my proposed budget to the airport authority members who will look through it. I will send it to them in advance so they will have seen it before. And any highlights that I have to them uh, that I want to attract their attention to because you know it's a couple of pages of a spreadsheet and it can get kind of tedious. So I'll, I'll highlight something to them 
of, of, of uh, what I'd like to attract their attention to that might be, especially if it's maybe something, a little bone of contention or something, because I want to be sure that they have a chance to think through it and, uh, and, have, and be uh, prepared to address it uh, on one side or the other when they come to the meeting. So at next week's meeting, they will look at that uh, budget and uh, approve it or modify it or whatever. When they walk out of the meeting, they should have voted on it that they have accepted the propo proposed budget as it is to send to both the city and the county for review because they do have obviously a financial stake in what's going on out at the airport. So we'll send it to the city and the county uh, to let them uh, review it. Uh, and and uh, uh, the two budgets that I've submitted so far have been accepted by the city and the county. We do some work behind the scenes beforehand to kind of expect what the contribution will be from the city and the county. Uh, and then one of the interesting aspects of this uh, that comes out of the operating account is say like the, the fire station at the airport. The fire station and the aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicles are owned by the airport authority. Even though we could have our own fire department if we wanted to because of our political status, we, we don't. What we do is we pay the city of Aldosta to man the fire department. So we have kind of a, a connection with the city uh, through that. And so I work with Chief Rice, Chief J.D. Rice with the, the city fire department on the, uh, uh, the management uh, or manning uh, that, uh, that station for us. They do a great job. Uh, we also uh, pay uh, the city to administer our payroll uh, we have a very small staff. The airport authority has five full-time and five part-time positions. And so we don't really have uh, all the stuff that we would like to have. So we, we basically, we don't pay them a whole lot, but we pay the city uh, to administer our payroll for us. It's airport authority funds, but it just comes in as the, as the payroll comes out. It comes out of a, a one account into our payroll account and then gets uh, direct deposit into the employees' accounts. One other thing that we have that the city does for us is they administer the grants. That's another part, a large part of the funding. Because we're an airline serviced airport and we in-plane more than 10,000 passengers a year, and 10,000 or more get on the airplane out of Valdosta, then we're entitled from the Federal Aviation Administration a million dollars a year uh, grant money. And this, is, these, this money is not for things like painting the walls and things like that. These are for big projects, infrastructure projects and building projects and that sort of thing. Uh, it's quite involved in administering those grants, and we're very grateful that the city uh, administers those grants for us, uh, where uh, there's a lady over there that makes the, once the FAA deposits the money where we can draw it down, and then the, the city will then write the checks to disperse the, the, uh, the grant payments. They're in reimbursable form. So uh, for us, if you think about, I go back to my operating account of the airport's operating account of a million dollars a year. If we've got a big construction project, we may get a, a bill that comes in for $400,000 that has to be paid, and the grant is a reimbursable agreement. So. Uh, we, uh, the city pays the check, then they draw down from the grant on a reimbursement basis. We just don't have that kind of money to, uh, to deal with. So we're grateful uh, uh, for that part of it uh, as well. We have a good working relationship with the first responders of both the city and the county. Uh, here, every three years we're required to do a full life scale exercise and that pretty much pulls every, every resource that we have from the city and the county. We try to tie it to a scenario that is realistic uh, and plausible, but then al that also uh, serves to fill, fill more than just our square. In other words, we try to get some training squares done for South Georgia Medical Center, uh, for EMS and some other first responders. So we, uh, we have a good, good relationship there. Back to the funding part from the Federal Aviation Administration. So you have the, the million dollar of entitlement money, which we, uh, we have to justify on a five year rolling plan with the FAA of here's what we'd like to do project-wise with that money, and then we're required as part of that to have professional engineering consultants to assist us in developing the capital improvement plan uh, for the airport, which um, they do a, a great job for us. And then there's another part of that funding called discretionary money, and so the, this money is done by the federal fiscal year, so it's the 1st of October until the 30th of September is how that's allocated. So it's a little bit different, it kind of gets confusing a little bit sometimes managing the, the different monies. Um, but uh, the entitlement money is if we have a special project, right now we're, we're very proud that we have a just under $3 million uh, aircraft rescue and firefighting station being constructed out, of, out at the airport. The one that we have now was built in the 1970s. If you can imagine the, not just the infrastructure of the building, but all the, the changes that have been made in the equipment that the firefighters wear and things out there. So I'll have a lot more on-site capability to, to deal with that. So out of this uh, roughly $3 million, 90% of it comes from the Federal Aviation Administration in the form of a grant. 2.5% comes from 
uh, Georgia Department of Transportation, and then 7.5% of that is paid out of uh, airport funds. The nice thing about this that I like to highlight to, to groups like this is th of that $3 million construction project, the prime contractors from Moultrie, architects from right here in Valdosta, structural engineers right up here on the corner, cruise engineering. Um, we've got uh, 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 the brick is being bought right here in town. And so anything that goes on out there at the airport, especially if it's outside funding coming in uh, for these projects, is uh, I, I try to do as best I can to drive it to a local solution so we can keep that money right here uh, in our in our area. And there's a, some math that uh, Georgia Department of Transportation uses that shows for every so many dollars of construction project it generates so many construction jobs uh, in the area. I can't exactly recall that number uh, but it, it's we do get some credit for economic impact on some construction jobs out there. It's going to be about a year-long project but if you drive down Madison Highway which is uh, on the east side of the airfield you'll see some construction going on. It's kind of a a domino effect. The first thing we're doing was we're building a small building to house some Federal Aviation Administration radios and communication equipment that's in an old existing building. When the, and then that'll get moved into that building. Then we'll tear down the old metal building that those radios are in now, and that's where we'll build the new fire station. And then we'll tear down the existing fire station and make it all look nice and pretty out there and, and uh, landscaped and, and fencing. Uh, and that, that new building, the new fire station, is going to set the architectural standard for that side of the airfield. We borrowed a lot of the uh, color schemes from the Valdosta State University campus. We kind of like that Spanish mission uh, color scheme. So you'll see some of that tying into, uh, into that project out there. We recently completed some drainage. Believe it or not, we had too much topsoil. As a farmer, you may know that topsoil is good about holding water, and too much of it will hold too much water. Uh, so we did uh, a fairly large drainage project to assist us in that. Uh, my, my next things that I'm working with on the FAA is a, is a building that houses all the special equipment that uh, runs the, the lights out on the, on the airport. And then also, um, I would like to uh, expand the parking ramp for the airline aircraft and possibly get us a jetway to get our passengers out to the uh, aircraft instead of uh, walking across the tarmac. My concern is, is that one of these days Delta's going to say that the 50 seat jets are going to be phased out and we want to put this kind of jet in and our parking ramp won't be big enough out there. So I want to be sure that we lead turn that, uh, if you will. So those are the kind of things that I'm thinking about. I don't think about yesterday too much other than what we can do better. Uh, but I'm trying to think 10, 15, 20 years down the road of what we should look like for our airport out there. The Georgia Department of Transportation commissioned an economic impact study for all 104 airports in Georgia, of which nine of them have airline service. We're one of those nine. And um, we, the, as they do it, their methodology that they use, we roughly have about a $25 million a year impact uh, in the local economy due to the airport. There's a lot of trickle on if those that more uh, switched on with the economics would understand. The third, fund, third primary funding stream is called a passenger facility charge. And this is very, very tightly controlled money. It's uh, uh, basically almost like the grant monies in that when you buy a ticket out of any airport and you're, you're flying out, um, there's $4.50 into that ticket price that is called passenger facility charge that is processed from the airline and then goes back to the airport. What I have to do with that program is develop it much like a budget, but it's more of a program for several years, and I submit it to both the FAA and the airline for review and approval and comments. And then as we get that money, we segregate it off into its own separate account. And then, so like to say the 7.5% funds that the airport is responsible for for the fire station, then we'll pay for that facility out of those funds. That, that particular facility is one of the ones that's been in that approved program. But I can guarantee it's, it's very, very tightly controlled and scrutinized. There's not a whole lot of commingling of money. There's no commingling of the money that goes on uh, out there. So we've governance funding and the projects. I alluded to um, the, uh, the new fire station, some of the other things going on uh, or that we, we're looking for in the future. A couple of things that are in the present that people have called about is the effects of sequestration. You may have heard of... Uh, uh, some control towers closing. Just because a control tower closes, it doesn't mean the airport has to close. That's not, control towers are convenient, they enhance safety, but they're not required. Our control tower is a little bit different. It's run by a company called Advanced Air Traffic Control, and they've partnered with Wiregrass Technical College and ourselves, and they're in the business of training air traffic control tower operators. 
So these students come from all over the United States. They go through their simulator training and ground school training out at Wiregrass, Georgia Tech. And then we're ready to control live traffic. They bring them out to the Valdosta Airport into our control tower. And they control live traffic there, and that's where they actually get their certification. Uh, so uh, because it's a private company, we've received no federal funding, then our tower will not close. As long as they have students coming through their program, then, then our tower is safe for the control. So in exchange for using the tower as a live laboratory, uh, that we don't pay them anything, and, uh, and they don't charge us anything. It's kind of a barter arrangement, if you will. They man the tower 365 days a year with, control, with certified controllers, and then they take advantage of the opportunity to train their students. But speaking of the tower, if those of you that have been by the airport, it sits on top of the, the original terminal building. It was built in 1948, and uh, it's, it's inside the building restriction line, and we would really like to have a new air traffic control tower and uh, it's about a two and a half million dollar endeavor uh, and because it's not a revenue generator it's a safety enhancement uh, there, there, as you can imagine there's not like private investors that might be interested in investing in a control tower uh, so our chairman has written letters to uh, the chairman of the county commission and to the mayor uh, saying that if you in fact uh, decide to put SPLOS back on the the next ballot is that we would like a, a, a control tower project uh, to be considered as a SPLOS project. So uh, what I would ask you to do is if it is put, if the SPLOS is on the ballot uh, and you hear about the various projects is uh, I would really appreciate your, uh, your support for a new control tower. If you'd like to see the existing one, you can just give me a call any day and I'll set up an appointment where we'll go and look at what we have existing. It's not unsafe, it's just, you can just tell it's very old. Construction at the airport has, has developed into where the existing control tower has some blind spots that can't see everywhere out there. So that's, that would be our number one project that I, uh, that, that would, would take that source of funding on that, on that piece of it. Uh, a couple of things that go on out there.